Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, thanks so much. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can check out my other videos. And if you're here for a second or third or fourth video, thank you so much for your support. Uh, greatly, greatly appreciate it and welcome back. Um, in today's video, we're gonna be giving tribute to Van Gogh and kind of focusing on his very expressive, impressionistic style and painting uh, one of his iconic pieces. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. And Van Gogh is a very popular paint at home subject matter. So I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. With this painting and any painting that I teach, you are more than welcome to switch out colors, uh, change it up, make it your own. Um, and quite a few people do that even with the old master painting. So feel free to change out and make it what you want. What you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit are all the colors, paints, brushes, surfaces that you might need to get started painting at home. So grab any of those extra uh, supplies that you might need and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Another thing that you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my first time and beginner painters to get your initial composition on your canvas without having to stress out about drawing and without basically having to stress out. So check the link below to where to acquire the traceable. And there's also a video on how to transfer your traceable to your surface. When you are a little bit more comfortable with your painting process and you wanna take your skills to the next level, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com and check out my uh, featured course on there, Paint Your Pet. And you will be painting from your own pet photograph and I'll go through the process on how to break it down and pick which photo and go through the process of painting. But when you paint something you care about, it's a whole new ball game for you. And you actually learn more and you put more energy into um, making it awesome. And it's your pet, so it's gonna be awesome. Uh, and that course is geared towards first time and beginner painters. So check it out and just keep evolving your skills as you get more and more into the creative process. So I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. It's going to be another fun Monet painting. So gather your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. So what you're going to see um, on the screen is I've gone over my traceable lines with a black Sharpie marker. And that is for those of you at home that are going to draw what you see. So if you're using the traceable, you don't have to go over them with the black Sharpie. You'll be bringing your paint right on top of those lines. So for this Monet painting, it's one of his um, darker and more simplified uh, lily paintings, but we're gonna be mixing blue and black. And you'll notice that a little bit of black goes a long way as you're mixing it in the blue. And here I'm demonstrating three different brush strokes that I want you to try as you are um, working in the background. And whichever brush stroke that you're feeling a little more comfortable with, you can kind of stick with that as you fill in all the area around the lily pads. Now I am using student grade paint and it's a bit on the transparent side. So I generally recommend that you apply it a little bit thicker. And if you need to, you can add a touch of water. You never want your brush dripping wet, but a little bit of water will help kind of extend the fluidity of your paint. But I also recommend not relying on the water a whole lot because it's actually gonna make your paint dry out a lot faster. So I recommend applying your paint a little bit thicker. And if you're on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that as you come to the edges, carrying this color around the sides of the canvas, of the stretched canvas, um, top, bottom, left, and right. And that way it just looks nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. Now, as you're moving around these water lilies, I stick with that same large flat brush, but if you need to move down to one of your smaller brushes, go right ahead and do that. If you're even inclined to finger paint, go right ahead and do that as well. It's very satisfying and very therapeutic. So the reason we're also applying the paint kind of thick is we're gonna be introducing some warm and cool shadows into here. We're gonna be putting some green and even red right on top of this paint. So we do need the paint to stay wet while we add those other colors in there. 
So if you apply it a little thicker, then that helps with the blending. Now, if you are holding your breath, take a big inhale, relax. You're doing a great job. Um, all my students end up holding their breath when they're a little nervous or doing something for the first time. So laugh at yourself. It's a little bit of a comic relief there and keep on painting. I do the same thing when I'm doing something new. I hold my breath and it's like, what do you tell your students? So I have to tell myself the same thing. All right, and again, just kind of filling in those areas. And if you need to grab that other brush, go right ahead and grab a smaller brush as needed. You guys are doing a great job. All right, so it's a good place to pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're still gonna be working on the background. So here you're gonna see, um, I didn't even clean the brush, but I grabbed that green slapped it right on top of the blue and the blue is pretty dark with that black mixed in there so we don't have a huge contrast but the green is what we call a cool shadow the red will make it a warm shadow and i do recommend that you pull up the original monet just type in monet um, water lily or close water lily painting and you'll find this image and whether you follow the video or you're referencing the original Monet painting, you are strengthening your power of observation. And if you see something in the original painting that I don't add to this one, feel free to add it to yours if you are inclined. And right here, I did move down to the smaller brush and realized that I forgot to put a little bit of blue in that area. So I went from the green, grabbed some more blue, filled that in, and we'll be going back to the green to add it in there. And as I add these colors in there, you'll notice that sometimes I actually apply that paint um, with my brush at about a 45 degree angle. So that way I can apply it a little thicker and it's kind of like icing a cake when you're working with thicker paint. Um, you don't want uh, the tips of the bristles to kind of cut back to the canvas. So if you hold that brush at that 45 degree angle, you have a little bit more control in manipulating that paint. So I did wipe the brush off and then went over and grabbed that red. And again, you'll notice the difference of how the red looks warmer when we start mixing it with the blue. So the next time that you either look at a photograph or you're out walking around and you see a shadow, start looking a little closer at that shadow. Do you see a little hint of red in it? Do you see a hint of purple or green? Um, shadows are not just solid colors. And the biggest part about painting is observing what you see. And Monet's paintings are awesome for that because he observes so many extra colors and little nuances of color in his compositions and the things that he painted. And that's generally what art is, is just observing your environment and yourself um, kind of from a new perspective. So there's no right or wrong way to paint. I tell my students the only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. So just the fact that you guys are going through this process, taking time out of your day, um, you're already successful. And I encourage you to find creative outlets on a regular basis for yourself. Uh, you have no idea how beneficial it is to your life until you've been painting for a while and um, you see the difference in your own just kind of mental quality and relaxation. You know, it's good to kind of switch gears of our brain and do something creative. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. Um, we're gonna move into using the green and filling in the lily pads. And I do kind of a bit of a dark green. So if you happen to have a light green at home, you can add a little bit of blue or even a little bit of black to it to make it a little bit darker. And again, we're gonna apply it kind of thick and what I'm gonna do is for this one, I'm gonna fill in this lily pad, then I'll grab a little bit of white and do some highlights on there. So we're doing some wet on wet blending. And then I'll go back to the rest of the lily pads and um, add all the green to them and then go in and add the highlight just so your brain can kind of, um, kind of get an idea of what we'll be doing for the painting. So here I grabbed that white and went right into that wet paint. And you'll notice that when you use light colors and you blend them into a darker color, that light color gets eaten up rather quickly. So it's okay to be very generous with the amount of white paint that you added here because that green's gonna dilute it rather quickly. Again, just kind of observe the place of where I put it and mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. 
And now going back to the green and we're going to fill in um, the rest of these lily pads with our thicker application of green paint. Again, remember to breathe, smile at yourself. Um, painting is such a wonderful outlet and I am very proud of you guys for painting at home. And it will be kind of one of the fun things that the more that you paint, the more your psyche and your, your body and your, your mental stability starts looking forward to your painting sessions. So that's why they're so beneficial. And every single person has their own style, just like handwriting. Everybody has their own handwriting. You're going to have your own painting style. So it is best not to judge yourself against other people, but just judge and compare yourself to what you painted the last time or a goal that you might be trying to achieve. Basically, just keep painting. <laughs> And again, if you painted the edges of your canvas, when you come to the edge of with these lily pads, just carry that green around the side as well. All right, getting that last bit of green. I think I had to reload some paint on my plate with the last two lily pads. Then we'll be going in um, with a few other colors, like I said, with the white, and then we will do a little shadow with adding the blue to this. So you guys are doing a great job. Had no idea how therapeutic it was just to move paint on the canvas. And if you do want to apply it thicker, you can kind of notice as I was doing those last two lily pads, I am holding that brush at about a 45 degree angle. So I'm not using the end of the brush, but kind of the side of the brush. And that helps me apply the paint a little bit thicker to keep a bit more of that opaque coverage. All right, so now grabbing that white. And again, just observe the place of where I put it and mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. Or you can look at the original Monet painting and just kind of mimic where you see the lighter, um, kind of lighter spearminty color, almost white, that you see on the original painting. This is another place, uh, like I said earlier, to finger paint to do some blending. Go right ahead and do that. Just grab some extra napkins. Um, but it's very, very tactile, very therapeutic to do that. Doing good. And even here as I'm applying the white, I'm still holding that brush at that kind of sideways angle. So don't be afraid to adapt and adjust to what you need um, for your painting style. If you need to turn the canvas upside down or turn it sideways because it's easier to make certain marks that way, go right ahead and do that. Most of the things that I teach are just merely suggestions. Use it as a base, but just find your own style. And then here I went back and just grabbed a little bit more of that green, making it a little darker uh, or a little more opaque. And then now doing the same thing with the blue. So we're kind of putting that shadow value. And this is the one place where the lily pads are overlapping each other. So again, just kind of notice by adding that blue, how it gives a little dimension to the lily pad in front of it. And same thing as I'm adding the blue, I'm holding that brush at that 45 degree angle. Um, and applying it and oh right here I forgot to add the blue in between so sometimes that happens in painting so if you end up forgetting about a spot and you need to go back and paint on it or you need to go back and do something that's totally okay that is part of the creative process so don't feel bad that you missed out or you didn't get it right on the first try there's there's no exact formula for painting and like I said earlier the only way to fail is to not paint at all so you guys are already successful. All right, so we're going to move back to green, apply it a little thicker just in a few areas, and then I will have you let your painting dry before we move on to um, 
the flowers on the lily pad. And here, again, just applying that green a little bit thicker, holding that brush at that 45 degree angle. Um, you could, if you wanted to, let this fully dry and redo a second round on the water, on the lily pads, um, and you would have a bit more of an opaque coverage. All right, so pause that video, take your progress photo, let this dry, um, and then we're gonna move into the flowers. So you, it does help to have that green fully dry so you don't contaminate your white. And I am using that middle flat brush. You can use this or the pointy brush. And super, super exciting, we're gonna put white on the white part of the canvas. So we've got two open lotus flowers and then the one above that smaller lotus flower the bud that hasn't quite opened yet. I do want you to kind of layer that on there again, kind of thick. That's kind of the theme of today's painting. We will at the end go back and adjust the points of each of these lotus flower petals um, after we've done a little bit of the pink and the yellow on the inside. So again, you can use that medium flat brush or your pointy brush as you do this. All right, so as we um, make our light pink, I am moving down to the pointy brush and you'll start with the white. A little bit of red goes a long way and your light pink might be a little darker than mine and that's okay. So again, just kind of observe uh, where I'm putting these lines and it's just kind of a little definition in between the petals. It doesn't have to be exact. And if you look at the original Monet, um, the entire thing is done in a very kind of quick uh, sketchy style so it's not like he's got a whole lot of uh, fine-tuned details or definition in there and that's kind of one of the nice things that makes this an impressionistic style painting approachable you're literally just painting blobs next to each other and kind of with the guidance and understanding different colors it creates a scene when you put different colored blobs next to each other in a certain order <laughs> The more that you paint and kind of get into impressionistic style painting, the more that will be uh, a little more understandable, I guess. All right, so a good place to take your video, your uh, progress shot and pause the video. And I, we're still sticking with that light pink and I don't have a whole lot of water on the brush. We're kind of using a dry brush method. So again, just observe kind of the general kind of sketchy lines that I make on here as we're going around the perimeter of each of these uh, lily pads. And again, reference that original Monet and see where he's got these like light sketchy, light pink, we'll even get into red lines um, surrounding the water lilies, lily pads. And this is kind of fun because it doesn't have to be exact and it's kind of nice with the brush being kind of dry where it kind of drags a little bit on the texture of the canvas. So again, just another application of how to work with the brushes and work with your paint. With all of that strengthening your power of observation. All right, so now we're gonna make a bit darker pink. So that's just adding a little more red to the pink you were just using. And I want you to go two shades darker than what you were using. Like I said earlier, it may not match the color I'm using, but I want you to go two shades darker than what you just put on your canvas. And we're gonna take this slightly darker pink and same thing that we did with the light pink, but in less areas, but kind of mimicking again, that sketchy style that was um, kind of surrounding the perimeter of the lily pads. Our next, we'll be grabbing that direct red and kind of same thing. We're just going to be putting it in even less areas. And again, if you look at that original, notice where Mo uh, Monet put the red and um, how it just kind of gives that pop. Red and green are complementing colors on the color wheel, meaning they have high contrast. So it's nice when you can incorporate complementing colors into your painting and it creates nice detail and depth or a nice contrast in depth. And adding just a little bit to each of the flowers. You're doing a great job. 
And as you do this, I want you to look at, prop your painting up and look at it from a distance of five to 10 feet away. Start looking at it from the normal viewing distance um, and start doing that with all of your artwork. All right, so we are uh, moving into yellow. The yellow I had on my plate blended in with the design on the edge, but it's basically going in the center of the lotus flowers. And then you're just kind of a quick little brush stroke moving up um, indicating that the petals of the flower are shooting upward. So great job, you guys. Um, I think at this point, I will actually go back to the white paint and the pointy brush and fine tune any of the little tips of the petals on the lotus flower that you feel compelled to add to. I'm actually just making sure I'm going over those black Sharpie lines so you can't see them. Um, because again, the original painting was rather sketchy, very impressionistic style. So you can make your uh, points on your petals as pointy as you want. But thanks so much for taking time out of your day to get creative and paint with me. Don't wait too long to do your next painting. And uh, until then, cheers. Hey guys, how's it going? I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you enjoyed the process of painting. I'm really proud of you. Good job. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, it truly is through you guys sharing my channel and videos, you sharing your work that encourages other people to paint. Um, and then when I post your guys' pictures on my social media, it encourages more people to paint. So please keep spreading the word. This channel is as successful as it is based on your guys' support and feedback. So you have brought it here. Let's keep it going. Um, any questions, comments, things you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment in the description box below and I'll add it to my production list. And um, keep on painting. Keep on getting creative. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with me. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers.